That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Ordinary Love, which opens on February 14th, 2020. That's Valentine's Day. Courtesy of Bleecker Street Media. It's directed by... Uh, it's uh, directed by Lisa Barros de Sa and Glenn Leyburn. It's their third uh, feature they've directed together. It premiered at the 2019 Toronto International Film Festival. Um, Have you seen their other two? No, uh, Cherry Bomb in 2009 and Good Vibrations in 2012. Um, I think so, oh. Good, Good Vibrations uh, competed, or yeah, it competed in South by Southwest. What is Ordinary Love about? Uh, breast cancer. Well, breast cancer. Uh, so Liam Neeson and Leslie Manville uh, play a couple, uh, a longtime married couple that are. I love how the IMDb description says they're middle aged, but clearly these two are retired. Um, Liam Neeson's a senior citizen. <laughs> um, yeah, Leslie Manville's in her sixties as well. So she, it, it's even before the um, title credits, uh, she discovers a lump in her breast, and the film is basically. A very, I'd say, authentic procedural of uh, what that experience feels like. Yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah. It, I, I think we were discussing after. It's a very matter of fact, uh, not a fussy film. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know what to say about it. I, I think it's very well done. The acting, particularly from Leslie Manville, is excellent. The story is quiet and, um, you know, maybe lending itself to the title, like, it, it's ordinary. There's nothing sort of spectacular about their relationship or her as a person, her experience, which I really appreciated. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't seem to sensationalize something that so many people deal with. Uh, you know, in that sense, it's a little predictable. Sure, yeah. But in a way that felt very real and... And it is moving without being, you know, I don't think it's pandering for tears. No, it's not schmaltzy at all. It's, no. I did get teary twice at least, but they were, it's... They were very uh, sort of like... Tender moments. Yeah. Uh, um, and I like that it's because there's a lot of scenes spent in hospitals and on operating tables. And the, the theme that is stressed, I think, is everybody's supportive and kind to one another. And yeah. just respectful of experiences. And... So I would, I like this film because it, it, it does not sensationalize this thing that so often is like. Oh, melodramatic. So melodramatic and. and Twaddle. And, <laughs> you know, I, I think people just like, it's a given that if you say you have cancer, you're battling cancer, then all of a sudden you get all this sympathy and. Well, I think of like in 1998, there was like One True Thing with Meryl Streep and Stepmom with Susan Sarandon and they're both dying of cancer and the. Which has grown kind of like, you know, everyone gets it, like we're all affected by it. So I, like, I really did appreciate that it's sort of quiet and humble. This yeah, film, it's great. Actually, that's the word I like. This film <clears throat> feels humble. Like these regular people, these ordinary people, their relationship is tested, but not in a way that's... I, I, again, like pandering for drama and... Well, they had... It, it, we bec become privy to the information that they had a daughter that died years ago. The circumstances of it's which are not never really made clear. In, in fact, we don't even know what the occupations of these people were. No, prior to but it doesn't happened. matter. It doesn't matter. I think which is why point. the plot point of them losing a daughter was lost on me. Um, See, I, you explained it. I, I think it was a way for it, it worked as a way to isolate and contain their world because they're very much emotionally dependent on one another, uh, and also it weirdly. So the, towards the end of the film, they befriend a, another couple that is going through this experience as well as a gay couple, a, a teacher that used to, t to teach their daughter, uh, played by David Wilmot. Um, and and it, it, their relationship kind of mirrors theirs, this kind of how easy it is to be cut off from the world. There's no children and grandchildren. They don't have all these friends, uh, per se. Uh, yeah, so I thought it was a nice mirror image for this gay couple, but... I will admit, when I read the synopsis and seeing Liam Neeson is in it, I was um, not super excited. Yeah, it took some convincing to... Uh... Um, and, you know, like, he, he's... His character is supposed to be sort of stoic and... 
one note. So he's effective. He's he's probably sometimes maybe even a little distracting, but he he does a fine enough job. Yeah, yeah, he um, does a good job. But, but this is really Leslie Manville, who um, you haven't seen Phantom Thread. She no. Played, well, uh, Daniel D. Lewis's sister. And I forgot she's nominated for an Oscar in that. Oh. But she's been around for a long time. Uh, excellent in a, some uh, Mike Lee films, like Another Year and Mr. Turner. Um, I really like her in this movie with Ava Green called Womb, directed by Benedict Fliegolf. Um, and, oh, and you have seen her. She's one of the, this is a throwaway role, but she's one of the fairy godmothers in the Maleficent movies. Oh. But you can, th those are so CGI, you can't even tell who those ladies are. Well, anyway, are, but she did an excellent job yeah, on this really film. Yeah, she's really good. Um, the scene where, you know, she goes starting to go through chemo and she's losing her hair and her husband cuts her hair off. There's a really through, touching yeah. scene where he cuts her hair off for her and, yeah, I would give this one three out of five stars. Yeah, I'd, I'd say three out of five is... But it is a, a, a very good movie. It just, you know, it is sort of a... It was written by Owen McCaffrey. Uh, whose only other screen credit is for uh, a film based on a play he wrote called Mickey Bo and Me. Um, and I think you had commented that this felt like something that someone had experienced personally or with a relative. Yeah, past. I can see this film really resonating with someone who is either dealing with breast cancer or has a close friend or family member who has. Mm -hmm. As someone who hasn't, it, it's effective. We had relatives that have had cancer. Sure, but I mean, but not to this extent, my personal yeah. sort of thoughts about it are very much like, you know, everyone gets it, no one's really special, so it is what it is, and this film kind of supports that, so I do like it. There, it just isn't like a very enjoyable film. No, it's not. It, but there's a minor theme, uh, Leslie Manville's character says this too. Their, their names are like Tom and Joan, by the way. Uh, but it says, like, the, she's telling an, another very young woman that's come in for treatment, like, I, I like to think of it, this is a train station, all the people coming and going. Because it's just so, it, it's an expected facet of our existence that we're yeah. probably going to get cancer. What would you give this film? Uh, three out of five stars, I think is fair. Yeah. Uh, very morbid for a Valentine's Day film, but uh, yeah. Are you done? Yeah, sure I'm done. All right, bye. <laughs> bye.